Hi, my name's Glenn. Pleased to meet you. I'm the Managing Director of Oakenclough Buildings. I've come here today looking for a minimum investment of £250,000 for at least a 30% stake in a new business that we are creating called Camping Bugs. The Camping Bug concept is simple. We design, we manufacture, we deliver and install buildings, then we lease them to campsites, hotels, also leasing them as garden offices and as uh, beach huts. By lowering the manufacturing cost, by the careful sourcing of materials and by the use of waste materials, I've managed to get the cost of the building down so we can now get out to the end line user at very affordable lease rates. The buildings are lined, they're insulated, they're double glazed and manufactured for all year round use. Following the growth of the glamour camping business, the Christmas market trade and the number of festivals, there's now a ready market for this product. Any questions? Glenn, can we have a look? Yeah, of course you can. Former police sergeant Glenn Brady believes his new take on the glamping craze is about to make him his fortune. That's not bad. It's pretty solid, isn't it? The Lancashire-based entrepreneur needs a cash injection of a quarter of a million pounds to get his new start-up company off the ground. But the hefty price tag does not seem to have put off Hilary DeVay. Glenn, I'm Hilary. Tell us a little bit about how it's made, the cost of making it, the retail price, etc. I own a timber building manufacturer and as part of that business we have a machine that makes log cabins. Right. And as a result of that production process I end up with a lot of waste and scrap wood. So if you look at the way the building's done, it's pretty much done look, all the whole front and back panels from very short offcuts of timber. So these are the, the bits that are left from manufacturing of the log cabins. And uh, basically the production cost would be somewhere between £800 to about £1,500. Right, OK. And have you leased any yet? All the ones that, we, that have been manufactured have been allocated to campsites or to places. And how many is that? We've, we've got about 50 manufactured so far. A good start as Glenn settles easily into den questioning. But leisure industry expert Deborah Meaden knows this market well. So you say you're making these or similar for between 800 and 1500 yeah. pounds, which I think is incredibly good value. So um, can you break that down in terms of um, labour and materials? The, at the moment, we make all the arch sections in a small workshop that I have in Poland, and it's roughly about £750. The floor's about 100 quid, the shingles are about 120 quid, and then there's the labour for putting it up, which was, it brings us to about the £1,000 mark. You're telling me you can make that whole thing there for the, £1,000? This pound. whole unit, take everything from the inside, about well, that £1,000. That's amazing, that's fantastic. Yeah. Glenn, £250,000. What are you going to do with a quarter of a million pounds? Well, the, the initial part of the investment would be to upgrade some of the, the production facility we've got, but that would only account for maybe £20,000, £30,000 worth of the investment. The investment would be to build a lot of them quickly for specific events that we know we can lease them out. But the money would pretty much sit in situ if we didn't do that. Right. If we don't lease any, if we don't put any on campsites, your money will stay in the bank and not get touched. Impressive product and a persuasive argument for investment. Glenn is doing well. But what of his other company? Peter Jones wants to know. Glenn. Yeah. Your current business. Yeah. What, what do you do? Manufacturing, timber buildings, sheds, log cabins. It's called Oak and Clough Buildings. What's the net asset with? value of the business at the moment? We own the land in the factory. You've got the machinery, the equipment, I would say probably a couple of million pounds. So wh why would you not just do this yourself? The, the motives for the investment are to look at leasing the product or getting this product to market quicker than we ordinarily would do, making two or three each week. OK. So I put a quarter of a million pounds into Newco. Newco spends my quarter of a million pounds with your company your company gets a return on the money invested because I've given you work and also you own 70% of Newco. Well, this, I mean, this... normally people have a bit more of a complicated process so that it's a bit more smoke and mirrors, but you've just gone, no, give me a quarter million quid and give it to my company that I own 100% of. 
No, I mean, the position that we're at now with this product, it's ready to be taken as totally an autonomous business. Away we can't, no, because your people are producing all of the stuff that the company needs with my money. It's a major setback for Glenn as Peter Jones uncovers a serious flaw in his investment proposition. And it looks to have incensed Theo Pafitis. Glenn, what makes you think that anyone is going to give you a quarter of a million pounds for something that's got hardly any assets in it and all it is is building some sheds? And then if you do get orders for your sheds, the money's going to go to your other company and to Poland. My money's going to disappear. Please, please, give me the answer why you think that's credible. Well, the, the reason why it's credible, for every £1,000 we draw off in investment, we will manufacture a building that we can retail for between five and seven thousand pounds, even as garden offices. But you can't, because if you could, you'd be making them day and night and smoking a cigar on a Caribbean beach. There's no business model that makes any form of sense except for yourself. I'm out. Thank you. Theo Pafitis delivers a stinging analysis, and Glenn's earlier confidence takes a hit. Now, will Duncan Bannatyne agree with his rival's concerns? I, I want to take you back to a question Hurry asked you. Yep. She asked you if you'd leased any out yet, and your reply was that you'd allocated the number two. And I don't know what that means. Have you leased any out? No. Have any ever been leased out? We leased about half a dozen last year. OK. Um, I'm out. Hook it up. Yeah. Right, I'm going to let you know where I am, Glenn. It's a little bit insulting to come in here and ask for £250,000 on a separate business without a track record and no basis on which anybody in their right mind would ever consider investing. And you don't look stupid to me. You won't be at all surprised to hear. I won't be investing. I'm out. OK, appreciate that. Thank you very much. Glenn, I think your pitch was outrageous. I think your business model is preposterous. I can't say any more. I just can't say any more. I am out. Short shrift from three dragons and the bewildered entrepreneur's investment dreams look to be all but over. But Peter Jones seems to have something on his mind. Glenn, would you be interested in a conversation about investing in the whole business? Um, to be honest, that w I wouldn't want to go down that, that avenue, really. Why? Um, if, you, if you put 250... Or if you, for every £1,000 you invest in these... The end line product, once we've made them, is then there's one thing times. about a guy that's been in business for 30 years. You ain't going to be able to diversify my train of thought by giving me some willy story about this. If you've got a business that has an asset value of two million quid, you're asking me to put 250,000 pounds into a company that has no assets. Why would you not entertain a conversation about me coming into the hole? What would you bring to that business that would? Let me oh, dear, oh dear me. In terms of... No, I mean, I just, just... I don't quite know what to say. You really should be coming in pitching the whole business, but you didn't want to do that because you want to keep it for yourself. This is definitely not investable, so I'm out. OK, OK, yeah. thank you. Thank, thank you. you. It was a promising start, but it takes more than that to part these canny dragons from their cash. After my experience of the day, I've got to say I've had better days in the office. <laughs> I wasn't expected to get quite a, such a severe reaction. I wasn't prepared to give part of my current business up, and by doing that, effectively, I put my own nail in my own coffin, but that was fair enough. It was one of those things. And, yeah, I'm looking forward to proving them wrong.